Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here very much with a live Jacob Prash uh, coming to us from England. Good morning, Jacob. And um, some of the believers had questions on, there's talk of a great revival, most of all in charismatic circles, but now that has gone over to even in Baptist churches. I don't find great revival in the end times in Scripture. How would you explain it? First of all, we have to understand certain things. The scriptures prophetically speak of a great falling away, an apostasy, a departure from the faith. They speak at least as much of a falling away from the faith as they do a revival. That's the first thing. Those who are emphasizing revival in this way to this degree do so without taking into account the fact that the scripture speaks at least as much of a great falling away. Secondly, much of what the scripture speaks of as a revival in the last days has to do with Israel and the Jews, not the Gentile nations. When the time of the Gentiles comes to a close and the age of the church ends, followed by the rapture and resurrection, God turns his prophetic purposes back to the salvation of Israel and the Jews at a very dark time, the darkest time in their history and the darkest time in human history. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. Be careful of people who are always blabbing about the so-called tribulation saints. That is an overstated doctrine. The book of Revelation tells us that when the church is removed, God turns his focus back to Israel and the Jews. The age of the church is over. More than that, it says, and men still would not be part of their wicked deeds. The scripture does not speak of a great revival after the rapture. There's a work of God among the Jews. So that's the second thing to be aware of. These silly things being said by Tim LaHaye should not be believed. They're simply not scriptural. The idea that the rapture is going to trigger a great end times revival is nonsense. The scripture tells us the opposite. It says, and men still would not depart of their wicked deeds after the rapture. He just makes this stuff up as he goes along, it seems like. Now, concerning, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh in the book of Joel. Again, that can be inclusive of all nations, although it has a specific focus, to a degree at least, on Israel and the Jews. However, we are seeing explosive growth of the gospel as we speak in the third world. A major part of our problem is we live in a post-Judeo-Christian neo-pagan Western world, North America, Australasia, Western Europe, countries that are not really Christian anymore, where mainstream Christianity is just Christendom, it is largely apostate and ecumenical. The true church is a faithful remnant. But while that is true, and while by any reasonable barometer of church history, Protestantism is morally, spiritually, and theologically dead, and evangelicism is in decline. There is a tremendous growth in the third world, in Latin America, in much of Asia, in uh, much of Africa. The opposite is, is happening. Now, the church in the third world has a lot of problems. They're being seduced by false doctrine from America, South Africa, and the West. That's a major problem. Lack of qualified leadership is another major problem. Poverty is another major problem, and often persecution, particularly at the hands of Islam, is another problem still. The church in the third world has many problems, but growth is not one of them. The only way that their growth is a problem is they don't have enough buildings and churches to meet him. Uh, they have doctrinal problems, they have all ethical problems, they have all kinds of problems. Financial problems, they have all kinds of problems but they don't have the problems we have. Our problems are a self-inflicted decline. The body of Christ in the Western world seems intent on committing suicide, and if Christ doesn't intervene, it would succeed in doing so. So I would argue that, to an appreciable degree, God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. The Protestant nations have had the gospel for 500 years since the Reformation. They've had access to it. Now the gospel is exploding in countries that did not have the Reformation. You look at Europe. Where is the church declining? Holland, Scandinavia, Britain, 
Germany. Where are the churches, that is the true churches, growing where people are being born again? Romania, you know, Bulgaria, uh, countries like that, um, countries that didn't have the Reformation. Southern Europe and in Catholic Europe, we've seen noticeable increases in the amounts of people coming to faith in Ireland, Portugal, Spain, and in Italy. While Protestantism is dead, and while Evangelical Protestantism is dying, uh, God is doing a work in Catholic countries and in Eastern Orthodox countries to a degree, but particularly in South America. Um, the Roman Catholic population of Brazil in the 1970s, in 1972, was about 96 percent. Now it's down to about 74 or 76 percent. The rest of those people became evangelical, mainly Pentecostal. You'll find similar, and that's the biggest Catholic country in the world demographically. You find similar trends throughout Latin America. You see this in Catholic countries like the Philippines. Tremendous evangelical growth. God is pouring out his spirit. He's just not pouring it out on white people anymore. He's pouring it out on yellow people and on black people. The only white people he's pouring his spirit out on are in countries that never had the Reformation or never had a Protestant tradition. You look at America. Which churches are the healthiest? Churches of Korean immigrants, churches of Latin American Pentecostals, <laughs> traditional white American and Afro-American churches are declining. The Afro-Caribbean ones, the Asian ones, the Hispanic ones are growing. Well, that's all over the world. It is all over the world. It is the same. Ultimately, of course, God will turn his grace from the Gentile nations completely back to Israel, this dark period in history. So the answer is threefold. First of all, the scripture speaks far more of a falling away than it does a revival. At least as much, but probably far more. Secondly, much of what it says of a revival concerns his purposes for Israel and the Jews in their unbelief. It does not concern his purposes for the church, which is going to be removed. The idea that there's going to be a great revival triggered by the rapture is complete and utter nonsense. It's directly contrary to what the scripture tells us. And finally, an argument can be made that the explosive growth of the gospel in countries that have never had a massive evangelical movement before in history, areas of Africa, Asia, South America, Eastern Europe, that never had a massive evangelical growth, as you did in Britain or America, etc. They're having it now. So, so to some degree, it's already happening. That is my answer. But above all, I would urge people to be extremely cautious, leery, when you hear the term tribulation saints. It is a term that is misunderstood, misused, and greatly overstated. God bless. And Jacob, just to add on to that, um, people in the States may add on, well, look at Andy Stanley's church. Look at the numeral, numerical growth of Saddleback. But aren't we talking more about okay, itching we're ears here? About, we're talking about artificial growth. This all comes from Fuller Theological Cemetery. Dr. McGavin did not believe these things. Dr. McGavin, who founded the church growth movement, at least he was its pioneer, believed you counted actual conversions, people who were saved, born again. The growth you've seen at these lunatic asylum churches, like Mars Hill and Saddleback, or, or Bill Johnson, or, or, or the one in Chicago with uh, Bill Hybels, these churches are based on transfer growth, people leaving one church for another. They go to see the latest show in town, and then when that show is over, they move on for the next show. It is Hillsong, in Australia the same. It's transfer growth. It's not real growth. It's people leaving one church for another. Now, don't get me wrong. I think people should leave bad churches for good ones. I think people should leave apostate and heretical churches for churches that are biblically grounded. But that's not real growth. Real growth is unsaved people getting saved. However, the kind of growth we're talking about at Saddleback and at Willow Creek in these places, 
That's not people leaving bad churches for good ones. It's people leaving bad churches for worse ones. It's not real growth. It's rubbish. You want to see real growth? Look at a real revival. I was saved in the last revival that happened in the United States, the Jesus movement among the hippies. All kinds of organizations came out of this. Some good, some not so good. Calvary Chapel came out of it. Jews for Jesus came out of it. The hippies did not find love, truth, and peace in taking LSD and practicing what we call free love. They found it in Jesus. There was a work of God among the hippies that mainly took place outside of the established churches. The people in the established churches who reached out to the hippies, like Chuck Smith and Morse Rosen, got in trouble with the established denominations for doing so and were largely ousted from them. That was the last revival. I saw people strung out on drugs, coming back from Vietnam, addicted to heroin. They were taking 100, 120 milligrams of methadone a day at a VA clinic to try to get off the heroin addiction they acquired in Vietnam. Just quitting. The Lord delivering them, no cold turkey, nothing. They just quit to smack the heroin by the power of Jesus. I saw people who into the occult, into LSD, and they're just radically being transformed. When you see a real revival and people being saved in those numbers and being delivered from the powers of, of gripping sins, you know what a real revival is. Anybody who's seen a real revival would not eat the filthy slop of Toronto or Pensacola or believe the lies of Rodney Brown or John Arnott or the Elam movement in England. They would not eat that garbage. If you tasted the real food, you wouldn't want the rubbish. These things are not revivals and they're not real growth. If you've seen real growth, you'll know what real revival is. And it's not what you see today. It's not Bill Johnson. It's not IHOP. It's not Hillsong. That's not a revival. It's a counterfeit. And Jacob, those who have left churches and are seeking a new one, what would, say if you were looking for a church, what would you look for the qualifications of that church? Because there are a lot of pe people that are churchless right now because of false doctrine. We did a series once called Church for the Churchless. The major issue is the solution to bad church is not no church, but good church. Not perfect church. You're never going to find a perfect church. As the adage goes, if you find a perfect church, don't set foot in the door, because the moment you set your foot in the door, it won't be perfect anymore. <laughs> I see people saying things like, the church is filled with hypocrites. I say... Well, in that case, Charlie, you ought to fit right in. Welcome to the club. The church is not a country club for nice people. It is a rehab center for sinners. You're not going to find a perfect church, but you will find a scriptural church. Many Christians today who cannot find a scripturally based church where they live within a reasonable distance are meeting in homes in small groups and then coming to conferences and things by speakers who teach the truth in their area. And they communicate with other such <coughs> groups by internet and get their teaching from things like YouTube or Roku TV or so forth like that. They're meeting in homes in small groups. If you cannot find a biblical church, meet in a home with other like-minded people. But if you're fortunate enough to have a good church that's biblically based with a good pastor, you commit yourself to it you pray for that pastor, you support that ministry. And if there is problems, you work with the pastor to correct those problems. What Jesus said to do in an age of apostasy is what he told one particular church. Strengthen the things that remain. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, let's end in prayer, Jacob. You pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and all the thanks. And we pray for ears that hear. And most of all, Father, we pray that your people get back into your word, back into scripture, Lord, because that's the only real truth we have. There is, is no truth except for your, for your written word in scripture, Lord. And we pray for those who are homeless or churchless right now that they would find good fellowships. And we pray that these teachings would reach others and make them want to turn back to scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise.